In this video I want to show you all stylized Gmart pipelines, from very old to new ones, and useful tips that you can use for any of them. The first ever pipeline was low poly. Back then artists had to create these simple 3D models and paint every texture from complete scratch by hand. This is why it's called hand painted textures. The most honorable projects were World of Warcraft and League of Legends. These two games are so legendary that they literally created the basement of all of the other stylized styles in the industry. Now I want to show you some tips on how to actually texture low poly because this channel is all about teaching game art and if you didn't know I'm working as a texture lead so I will try to give some of the useful advices right here. Even though low poly pipeline is outdated it's still useful to know some tips. First of all notice that we don't really care about the polygons at all so it's completely fine to paint over it and kind of fake the volume. For example here I even have this bevel on the wood. I have these big cracks that doesn't really follow the flow of the polygons and to be honest it doesn't really matter until it looks fine from the distance and to show you a few tips every time you paint on low poly you need to press on 4 in critical to see the wireframe you can try other software like photoshop and blender to be honest it doesn't really matter at this point but if you're starting out and you don't have much of the painting experience i suggest to use 3d code and photoshop it will be just way easier to paint on low poly if i press on 4 to see wireframe you will see that this highlight this one is actually went further than the edge and it completely makes sense because if you paint right on the edge you will see how bad it will look like and it's just better to paint over it. For example you can fake some volume by adding bevel like this one and from the distance it will look like we have more polygons. Also think twice if you don't have experience in painting and you want to try low poly because you will need to paint a lot. You will need to literally create the entire illustration on the 3D model. In my opinion it's not worth it if we talk about the modern games. And this is how the process will look like. First of all you need to fill everything with one color, then we need to fill the light and shadow just like this and you can splash some big brush strokes right away. Then I will just use the same brush strokes and I will detail it. Then I will have gradient pass. First one I use it with photoshop. So in 3D code we can easily press on ctrl p to quickly go to photoshop automatically. Here on the new layer I can use polygon lso tool. To create selection like this one, let's also select this side, pick this color, make it way more saturated and darker, and let's put some ambient occlusion right here, and also let's put huge dark gradient. You saw how fast it was in literally a few seconds, we can add details like this, this is basically what I did here, then I did it on the light gradients, then I add ambient occlusion the same way, take a look at this, this is before and after. And then I had a final layer where I added huge gradient to make this model even more readable from the distance and to make this part focal point I added huge gradient from this side and I tweaked the color a bit. This is how it looked like. And also I made these shadows and this part colder, so keep this in mind. As I mentioned, low poly is fun, but it will be very hard to find a work in the industry using only this pipeline. But it could be a great way for 2D artist or painter to switch to 3 yard just to try it out. The worst part that we actually need to paint from complete scratch, I mean all of the light and shadow information, and that's why I have a cheat code for you guys. Every time you paint on low poly, I suggest to use Substance Painter for color base. Let's switch material to base color, let's add new fill layer, put it on some brown color just like this, let's copy it by pressing on ctrl d, right click, add a black mask, right click once again, let's add the generator, light, and go back to color and let's make it brighter and of course warmer. Guys, keep in mind that every light information you add on your texture should be brighter, warmer and less saturated. And we don't have any warp space normal, any position, which is called texture set settings, bake mesh maps, and we need to bake everything. Right here, press on this button and that will be it. Yep, eventually we get something like this, so let's switch to base color once again. And now we can rotate this light. So we actually have it from the top, just like this, and if we want, we can change the opacity a bit. In my opinion, if you want to paint on low poly, it's just better to create color base like this, because if you're a complete beginner and you try to paint light and shadow information, it will be extremely hard for you. Then guys, we're moving on to PBR pipeline. With PBR, we have ZBrush for sculpting, we have Substance Painter with automatic procedural layer system, also we got real-time game engines, we have real-time lightning, and of course, we can bake information from high poly model to 
low poly. So essential software if you want to work as a 3D artist, in my opinion, is ZBrush and Substance Painter and any kind of 3D modeling software. The most honorable PBR stylized projects were Overwatch and Fortnite, in my opinion. They literally changed the entire style. With PBR, literally every model became shinier because we have metallic map, we have roughness, sometimes we have emissive, and for PBR on the pipeline you will need to use Substance Painter and Photoshop maybe. The best part that this pipeline couldn't be replaced by AI technologies in the future, they might speed it up, but not so much, so these games back then made a huge shift, but now we have another pipeline which called PBR and hand paint. You will simply combine PBR pipeline and also hand painted textures, but you will need to paint in a very specific way. The only difference here is texturing approach and first of all you will need to use Substance Painter of course, to create color base. This will be a typical example of the color base that we have in Substance Painter for stylized projects. As you can see we don't have any harsh shadows or highlights and for this one we use our plugin that will speed up the entire process and also make everything way lighter, simple diffuse. You can create similar results with light generators, but this will be solution if you want to work way faster and if you want to have everything in one place. In this case, color base will be ideal for detail sculpting. We have some features like this one, for example, room light from the bottom, and also we have brush stroke generator, so you can fake it and you can even pick your own. At this point, all we need is to add the generator every time and change the color. Only after this, we need to push our color base with hand paint textures and it will look like this. And it seems like you need to be professional painter, but actually it's not. The most important part will be eyes, eye area, not many people pay attention to this. Lips of course, making this skin softer, because from the color base you can notice that even this light on the nose, which is barely kind of visible, it's still too much for the skin. And also I definitely suggest to detail hair for any kind of characters. And in my opinion, even if you have only PBR games without any hand paint, you still need to paint on the face of your characters just a bit guys. You can see how it looks in our game and it's very simple to optimize. The most important part in PVR hand paint pipeline that you don't need to paint everywhere, especially if you have good sculpting. For example, I haven't painted on the lower body here and here at all. In this style, it's better not to paint everywhere and paint only on the main focal point, which will be the face. Or maybe this weapon. First of all, we have color base, then we add details. I decided to add a bit of the green and red right here and then I suggest to add ambient occlusion gradients for example here in photoshop or even here this is how it will look like and then I have barely visible white gradients here and a bit on the metal. That was it for this weapon, you don't need to be a professional painter to make it, but you definitely need to know art and design fundamentals. I just love the difference between color base and final hand paint, and this is what we teach in our school on every course, you can check the link in the description. And this one specifically, we made with Adrian Hordinsky, professional 3D character artist, we created two characters from complete scratch for one program. We also show how to animate, render and present it, for your socials and portfolio. Sometimes on PBR and hand paint pipeline you don't need to paint much like we did on the character, but sometimes you need to have result like this. So as you can see, the sculpt is very simple, we have this color base and for some top games it just won't be finished. So you can push it just like this. We just pick the same colors from the color base and we detail it here on the crystal. Then with a saw brush I will detail snow. I use it for any kind of organic materials. Take a look at this one. Then we add very simple gradients with the saw brush. I will add caustics from the bottom, basically the light that will go through the crystal and also some small snow particles and highlights right here to blend these two materials. And only then we have final post process, which seems pretty simple, but actually it's not. First of all, I added colorful gradient on the snow, I mean on every edge that you see right here. This way we can kind of visually blend these two materials. Then I decided to select this entire top part of the crystal and increase saturation. Because because here on the crystal we won't have light, we will have only the reflection from the sky. Light will go through the crystal and it will appear right here. And every time we can blend some green colors like we have here and purple ones just to make it a bit more artistic. And then we need to go over with big soap gradients. I added some light here on the top and I think I made this part in the bottom a bit darker. And this way we can kind of achieve illustration look. If you take a look at the color base, we didn't break any of the normal map information and it's very important. And only after we have texture like this, we can create roughness, metallic map or even emissive based on our hand paint texture. And we will make
make it in Substance Painter. For roughness, we will just need to invert this hand paint texture and tweak it with levels. The most honorable projects were Ruin King and Wayfinder. You can see they literally have very detailed hand paint texture and also normal map and roughness map information on top of it in Substance Painter. By the way, in Wayfinder not everything was textured in 3D code and Photoshop. Sometimes you can use only Substance Painter if you want. For example, we invited Darina who can create this type of textures from complete scratch in Substance Painter and she recorded the whole creation process, I mean from sculpting to texturing and rendering and we got this result for our new 3 yard program. And I forgot to mention that every time you make this texture you will need to upload it to Unreal Engine and you will need to tweak some of the shaders. And if you want to find more job opportunities in the industry I definitely suggest to learn Unreal Engine, especially shading. And here we go guys, at this point we literally created our own game with this pipeline. Actually it's combination of only Pibara and sometimes PBR and hand paint. Here we go guys, this is actually a huge MMORPG game. I was probably testing this one long time ago anyways, it's already dead. I want to take the chance and tell that in Enhanced Studio we produce the entire games from complete scratch for your needs, also game art and game development tips for your specific needs, if you're a studio or if you want to create your own project. And these models you can literally see in my portfolio and in my opinion guys, Knowledge in this case is everything if you want to work as a 3D artist in the industry. This is just how fast you will learn all of the correct techniques and tips, for example to push textures like this, or how to create nice models in ZBrush, match all of the proportions. Because here yeah, it's very easy to learn this software and all of these tools, but it's just way harder to push the good result like we see in the modern games. It will be even better if you can learn with constant feedbacks and this is what we have in Enhanced School. We teach on the modern game art. And all of the techniques that you saw in our courses we actually used in our game. Right now we have a huge game in progress so we can tell you about any game development step. Let me know in the comments what video do you want to see next and that will be it. Thank you for watching, see you soon guys.